One of the cool things we looked at last time was how you cannot uh, have a perfect engine. You can't have an engine where you take all of the Q and convert it only into work. But we can have an engine where some of the Q is dissipated into a different thermal reservoir. And then we can use this to calculate how much work we can get out based on the amount of energy inputs that we're giving to this engine. So, starting from our two balance equations here for the integrated form, we can consider, um, we can consider a, simple, a simple situation where we can calculate the maximum efficiency, and this could become a, a design goal, also a sanity check for doing thermodynamic calculations. So, starting with these equations, following our diagram of the engine. Let's consider, uh, let's use them to simplify this down and then solve for the maximum efficiency of this, of this engine scheme. So here you have two streams of energy work. So we're going to split Q into two terms here. We're going to neglect the internal uh, um, changes in the, in, in the um, kinetic and uh, potential energies. So these terms will all go away. Uh, well, the first system we'll consider to be only an engine that transfers heat and there is no transfer of mass. If there's a flowing engine, then of course there's transfer of mass. Um, but for the simplest case, let's consider this to be a closed system where there's going to be a, a transfer of, 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 that, uh, of heat only. And lastly, let's combine these two terms into one overall W. We can then uh, look into the specifics of engine design to split the, the W's out. But let's just look at overall work here instead of the individual works. So for, um, for our system, um, if we go through one complete cycle of this, then the energy at the end will be the same as the energy at the beginning as well. One complete cycle of this will result similarly in the entropy at the end being the same as the entropy in the beginning. There's no flows. Okay. So um, what we'll have then is this is a Q dot. We'll replace Q dot with individual Q1 and Q2 for the overall integrated um, um, amounts of energy flowing in that system. And we'll leave S gen in for now. So let's rewrite this simplified energy and entropy balance equation with the granularity for the two streams of ener heat energy that we have, Q1 plus Q2, and we're left with um, the work done here on the system. Similarly, for the entropy, we're going to have Q1 over T1 plus Q2 over T2 for uh, one complete cycle of, of those Qs occurring um, with thermal energy reservoir T1 and thermal reservoir T2, plus, of course, our overall S-gen. Starting with the same equations as we did before. We can uh, be specific. I'll just write this here. This is the integral of T1 to T2 of Q dot uh, dt. And, of course, W is the entire, the entire uh, work term that we already pointed out earlier. So... Um, we can then substitute. We can choose either one. Choose um, Q1 or Q2 and substitute and algebra uh, to rearrange this uh, equation. So what we end up with is minus W equals Q1 times T1 minus T2. This is if we're substituting and swapping out the Q2 term and then combining them together, all divided by T1. Well, because T, Q1 times T1 over T1 is still Q1, and then um, Q1 times the T2 over T1 uh, is, where, is where you get this from the entropy equation, plus S gen. We know that the most efficient engine occurs when we have no internal gradients. Everything is at equilibrium. And so this is the uh, ultimate design goal of S gen equals zero. 
So with ultimate design goal SJN equals zero, we have minus W, which is the work done by the system on the surroundings, um, is equal to Q1 times T1 minus T2 over T1, or the efficiency is going to be equal to the amount of work that you get per amount of input of energy and this is going to be equal to the temperature difference between your thermal reservoirs. This is the absolute um, best possible engine. And the, the first like theoretical uh, engine with a piston device to look at this um, is called the, the Carnot engine. Um, Sometimes I like to call it the Carnot engine because you cannot reach uh, this perfect efficiency. But this becomes the upper end for engine efficiency with no gradients of temperature and um, no friction of that device.